Before we move on to uh, the network analysis uh, method, let's look at um, something uh, else to begin with. This will come into uh, the network um, analysis toolbox, but let's start with a very simple non-network analysis. Let's start with buffers. Hopefully you've encountered buffers before, you should have. Uh, here we have four points, four nodes potentially, uh, and we're going to buffer them out to some distance. So each node gets buffered out to a particular distance, and we say this is the area of access perhaps around each of these points, whatever these points may represent. So here we have, say, a one kilometer radius or some, some such distance from each of these points, and we can access the whole area around each of these bus stops, shops, whatever they are. Um, we have that much access, but obviously we're just going in any direction. We're not taking any consideration to the terrain, to the to the difficulty of moving over that terrain, whether there are roads there or not. But this this is a simple buffer access uh, map, we can say. And we define this area then. If we combine all of these buffers, we merge them into one buffer, dissolve the boundaries. Um, we have this larger area that defines the, the, our coverage. By, of, from these four points, whatever they may represent. That's, that's the area that we cover with our infrastructure. These four points are our infrastructure, bus stops, for example. If we then lay on a network, and as we can see, we've put the network here, a uh, very simple, ugly network, but it, it's there. Uh, now we start to um, nuance our analysis, and we say that travel along the network is actually uh, more efficient and traveling outside of the network incurs some high cost. It may even potentially be impossible and that we're constrained to traveling along the network. Uh, this is, this is how, uh, how far we can reach traveling a particular distance. Let's say it's a travel time of one hour or um, a particular energy output that is or requirement needed to travel and it's a lot more efficient to travel along the, the network than it is outside of it. So how do we compare the buffers in the network? Well, if we're traveling along the road, and let's say that uh, this is our maximally efficient travel is along the, along the road here, or the railway, or the cycle path, or whatever this is, and we can get out to this particular distance uh, here, along the road, from this node here at the center of, uh, would have to be the center of our buffer. Um, the buffers are, in, in a sense, uh, not relevant here right now, they're just there for comparison, but we can travel out a particular distance from our node there, uh, out to that maximum distance. That's where we tire, we can no longer travel any farther, or that's one hour of travel, or uh, wh whatever our measure is. Um, if we were to travel along this road, well, it stops. We cannot go further than there because there is no network, so it stops there. That was the, the, the sum of our journey there, along that part. And we can continue our analysis and we go out follow the network along. And that was traveling from the red node. If we now switch to this next node here, um, we have a problem because that node does not lie on the network. It is a, near the network, but it is not on the network. So we need to make some sort of decision, set some sort of rule to say, how do we access the network? Do we just take the shortest path to the network across this rugged terrain, the unknown area, whatever this is, uh, straight to the network? Do we say we have to go to a pre-existing node? For example, there may be a node here that we just can't see because there's no junction. We can actually have a node there. Or do we have to go, to, if there isn't a node there, there's a node there. Can we go to a node there? Is that our point of access? Or can we just hop on the line regardless of whether there's a node, just the shortest path to it? And when we do this, have we already used up some of our travel time, some of our energy, some of our money, whatever it is we're using to measure our travel through the network? All settings that we can put in to our analysis. But so we've resolved that issue. We've now gone from our node onto the network and then we continue traveling as normal. And as we can see here, we've used up some of our money, travel time, whatever it is, and we can't quite reach out to the end because we have to follow the geometry of the network, so we don't get out to the end. And this applies everywhere. If we look at the rest of the network, we can see we don't quite get out uh, all the way. And in extreme cases where the geometry is particularly unhelpful, we can see we go up here, 
we're far from the, the maximum boundary if we compare with the buffer. We can see that the, the travel along through the network means that we don't get out as far away. The straight line distance from our starting point out is much shorter uh, because of our being constrained to the network. Now, this uh, raises an interesting uh, issue, this access to the network and the travel times along the network. If we are allowing ourselves to move over this unknown terrain here to the network, to access the network, can we not also leave the network in order to access this area outside? Then we start getting into the, 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 the concept of the service area. So the service area is that area not just directly on the network but adjacent to the network that we might be able to access from it. And then naively we could just sort of buffer out our, uh, our roads that we've been able to travel on that, that part of the network that is within the allotted distance, uh, our one hour travel time or 100 krona uh, petrol cost or wh whatever it is we're using to, to travel through the network and then buffer out some distance, some cost that we define somehow, some way. This is a very naive analysis and obviously it doesn't look terribly satisfactory um, when we consider what, we've, what we're trying to do with this. A better way of doing the, the, the service area calculation would be so to consider, well, how far out can we travel? If we're, if we're not traveling on the, on the road network or the rail network or the cycle path network, whatever our network is, how far can we travel on this other surface? Um, it occurs a much greater cost to, to, to do this, but we're allowing it. Um, so we're cycling from, we start, we start cycling from this point here. If we cycle along the roads, it's, uh, it's a, a tarmac road uh, and we can just skip along uh, and very freely. But once we, once we leave the road and we get onto, say, grass or, or, or rough terrain, obviously it takes a, a lot more effort, more time, to cycle on there. So if, we, if we're setting a limit of say 15 minutes out from our starting point, if we go along the cycle path, we can get all the way up there. But if we leave the cycle path, it's a lot sweatier. It takes us a lot longer. What happens then if we cycle along this path for most of it, um, but when we get to the end, we can leave it. Well, obviously we've used up a lot of our time to get to there. There's still a little bit left that we can then cycle over the grass to get to our destination or whatever it is, but not quite as much as when we started there. And if we cycle all the way out to the end, as far as our, our maximum limit is, there's nothing left. So we can't leave the path uh, anymore. We've, we've, we've reached our 15 minute limit or, or whatever our limit is. And if we connect these up, these maximum up, we can sort of define naively uh, a service area. So anywhere within these dotted lines around here would represent the area that we can access by help of the network and being allowed to leave that network um, at the last minute, so to speak. So we start here, cycle along, and if we leave it here, we can get out to this area. All of this is within access of, the, of our network. Cycle along here, we can leave it to get to anywhere out there. Beyond this, this is too far away. It will take too long, more than our time limit or more than our energy cost or whatever it is that we're using. And this is a very simple analysis. Uh, you can question the correctness of this, definitely do, uh, but it's, it's illustrative of how we might do this. And if we extend that throughout the whole network, we end up with some form, some shape uh, like this perhaps, where we have our nodes, our starting points in here and we can move through the network and then leave the network at certain points some distance, much reduced to the, our, um, the distance we can travel along the network, but we can actually leave it. And this is our service area. And we compare that with our buffered uh, zone around our four nodes, and we can see that it's considerably smaller. It is going to be smaller, always smaller than the buffered area, uh, simply because we are constrained to the, the network. So that's the, the basic concept of the service area.